Could the Trisolarans have chosen a different path? And if the dark forest is real, why hasn't Earth been destroyed yet? Liu Chi Xin's The Three Body Problem offers a terrifying answer. And while much of it remains speculative, its foundation lies in fundamental principles of game theory. Nevertheless, the main criticism of the Dark Forest model is that it assumes all civilizations follow a similar pattern of paranoia and aggression. While the Trisolarans are depicted as hostile and authoritarian, one could argue that most civilizations might be cooperative and seek alliances rather than destruction. However, evolutionary pressures favour survival strategies that prioritise self-preservation. Even if 99% of civilizations are peaceful, a single aggressive one following the Dark Forest principle would eliminate all others. This creates an environment where natural selection ensures only the most cautious and secretive civilizations survive in the long term. The game theoretic reasoning behind this idea suggests that civilizations that do not follow the dark forest principle always go extinct, even in galaxies where the predominant majority of civilizations are peaceful. One might argue that a few aggressive civilizations would be annihilated by the predominant majority of peaceful ones. However, this argument misses a critical factor. There is no way for these civilizations to know which one is launching preemptive strikes. This uncertainty intensifies the chain of suspicion between civilizations, further reinforcing the dark forest effect. Imagine being in a pitch black cave with hundred strangers. Everyone claims to be friendly, yet every few moments someone screams after being hit by a lethal dart. Since there is no way to determine who among you is the attacker, the only solution is for everyone to remain silent and use lethal force the moment they come into contact with anyone. This is the essence of the dark forest and it is why it remains one of the most realistic solutions to the Fermi paradox. Another common objection to the dark forest hypothesis is that Earth still exists. If the universe were truly an unforgiving place where civilizations annihilate potential rivals upon detection, why hasn't humanity yet been eliminated? With modern astronomy, we can detect exoplanets and even analyze their atmospheres for potential technosignatures. A sufficiently advanced civilization could do the same, identifying technological presence on Earth and taking preemptive action. However, this critique overlooks the immense distances and timescales involved. Suppose an extraterrestrial civilization, 150 light years from Earth, had detected our earliest technosignatures from the 1800s. Assuming they followed the Dark Forest strategy, they might have launched a relativistic projectile toward Earth. These projectiles, traveling at a substantial fraction of the speed of light, could still be heading our way. If the detection occurred in 1950 and their relativistic weapon traveled at 99% the speed of light, it would not arrive until at least 2100. This means that even if the dark forest hypothesis is correct, humanity is simply living in a grace period before an existential event occurs. Furthermore, the rarity of life in the universe reinforces the plausibility of the dark forest if intelligent civilizations are distributed across vast distances, detection events would be uncommon and response times to these events would be long. Additionally, any civilization more than 500 light years away would probably find it impractical to launch a preemptive strike because by the time their projectile arrives, our civilization will likely become interstellar. So, the Dark Forest applies most effectively within a 500 light year radius. A civilization fortunate enough to arise in an area of the galaxy where no other civilizations exist within 500 light years would be in a relatively safe environment, allowing it to grow exponentially and even build Dyson spheres. However, such a civilization would have no way of knowing whether they were truly alone and would likely still have to expand cautiously, only to discover thousands of years later that they had needlessly limited their progress. 
Additionally, some argue that the search for life is often focused on stable, long-lived stars as their stability is crucial for the development of complex life. Advanced civilizations could refine their search for intelligence by targeting only these systems and deploying RKVs in a shoot-and-forget strategy, regardless of detected techno-signatures. However, this assumes that civilizations would be willing to destroy otherwise habitable worlds purely for security on a galactic level. This approach is highly unlikely as it would severely limit their long-term expansion and weaken their standing on a cluster level. One of the questions raised is why the Trisolarans, a civilization advanced enough to construct a vast interstellar fleet, would choose to embark on an arduous journey to invade Earth instead of adapting to their chaotic home system. Although the reason for invading Earth lies in dark forest theory, theoretically, they could have remained within their solar system, utilizing a modular Dyson Swarm to harvest energy from their three suns, while simultaneously constructing artificial habitats free from the instability of planetary orbits. In contrast to a full Dyson Sphere, a Dyson Swarm consists of individual satellites harnessing solar energy, enabling the Trisolarans to collect an immense amount without being constrained by the gravitational chaos of their home planet. A civilization capable of launching an interstellar fleet should be technologically adept enough to sustain such a structure. However, there are several challenges to this idea. In a system with three gravitationally unstable stars, maintaining a Dyson Swarm would require extensive orbital corrections. Each individual solar collector would need to constantly adjust its position to avoid being ejected from orbit or pulled into one of the stars. The energy required for these corrections would often exceed the net energy gain, making the whole endeavor impractical. Additionally, a Dyson Swarm with significant coverage would create a detectable techno-signature, while a partial Dyson Swarm, covering only a small percentage of the system's solar output, might be indistinguishable from natural space debris. The gradual dimming of a star is a classic techno-signature of a Dyson Sphere under construction. Advanced civilizations capable of detecting exoplanets through transit methods could potentially detect this artificial dimming as a sign of technological activity. This could potentially reveal the existence of the Trisolarans to hostile civilizations, painting a target on their backs.